Hello there. Good day, sir. Yes. How are you? I'm good, man. A little tired from our... Yeah. I'm not as tired as our professor is, I'm sure, from two days of coaching, but... The two days thing. It's rough. For people that don't know, uh, big tournaments that are... They split them. Adult one day, youth the next. Is brutal on coaches. Oh, man. Just one full day is brutal. I was tired, and I... I was only there from like 8.30 to 2.30, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I autopiloted basically the whole way home. Oh, like it was well, that just, must be nice. It is, but you kind of, you can doze off then. I can imagine, and just kind of get complacent with yeah, that. Which you don't want to do. Yeah. Um, I don't trust the, the robots that much. No, for sure. And yeah, so the vo- you feel, you're not sure if you're getting sick the next day or if your voice is just gone. Yeah, my voice was gone for sure. <laughs> um, I always, in those things, I always do a little um, virus prevention too. Yeah. I'll, I'll do... Full stack of Yeah, I'll do some stuff. zinc, quercetin, and nettles, and I'll shoot the nasal stuff up with a little iodine in it. <laughs> yeah, a lot of time we uh, we'd neti pot with the iodine. Yeah, to, uh, that's smart. We didn't last time, but... A lot of time, that's uh, mm. definitely Olivia does it because she has a really good streak of attending events and getting sick after. Well, it's what, it, <laughs> hey, yeah, it's a, you know, you know, no one wants a hot to be breath. It's not a, I mean, you just feel like crud for a couple of days, and it's avoid it if you can, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would it, like, go just, ahead. I would like to say, uh, big ups and thank you to all the people that came up uh, and said what's up that listen to the podcast oh yeah yeah had a handful of different people uh it was i think even before you got there uh that a, a few came up and i was like well you'll see chris walking around um yeah but uh that w- that was pretty cool it was it was yeah it's cool the community's so cool anyway and this is the big tournament in the northwest so you know it's mm-hmm. not a lot of academies i think over 100 academies were there yeah 2500 something competitors just for the adults and um our team, as far as when you break out just the individual academies, we came out third mm-hmm. overall, fifth in gi, and I think same in no gi or something like that. Right? Yeah, it, the, it gets it's kind of odd how sometimes it, it works out with the, how they combine points. And stuff yeah, it's, like it's a little squirrely sometimes, but it's still. And I we mean, don't bring a big no gi team, so that kind of ends up doing us dirty in the grand scheme. But. Yeah, but but I'm super proud of especially the first time competitors. They went out oh. there and overcame their nerves and got after it so it was great yeah that was something that in the uh, just got done with the day class today Mm -hmm. and is something that mentioned is like we we had some people that had just on paper what you would say is a phenomenal uh tournament right Mm -hmm. they won every match Mm -hmm. got submissions left and right um which is great and i i mean literally that's awesome Mm -hmm. I get super encouraged and I'm not saying I value this more or something like that, but I I do get encouraged when I see people go through and maybe they got beat up. Maybe they um, just had a bad match. Uh, maybe they didn't perform how they usually do or what, whatever have you, but they have a disheartening match and then they come back the next match. And I'm not even say when, Mm-hmm. but they change yeah they, they they improve yep and being someone that can struggle with the whole self-doubt and mm-hmm. all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff i i know the feeling that some people ha- had to go through where they had a tough first match or let's say and they um probably didn't want to go out for the second one <laughs> understood and that's and exactly exactly and you know i i mm-hmm. he's a good friend so i'm not afraid to drop him by name but justin he had a tough first match mm-hmm. against a judo brown belt um and i heard he, he went out there and wanted to do some judo with him he, he, well he didn't know he's a judo brown i know belt. that was hilarious yeah and uh <laughs> it turns out the guy was but in my opinion he went toe-to-toe with the guy mm-hmm. um he uh secured his his quality grips um his back grip and um, he almost got a, a nice ankle pick on the guy. Um, it was a tough, good match. Uh, he ended up losing. and um, But he came back onto the next match mm-hmm. and scored 34 points. Yeah. And then submitted the person. 
Wow, that's just like spiking the ball in the end zone. A little bit, a little aggressive, actually. <laughs> we probably got to talk to him about that. But like stuff like that. Yeah. You know. Um, I know one, I mean, I had a bunch of people that did great that I was coaching. One in particular, one of our ladies' um, first first tournament. Mm-hmm. Uh, white belt. Yep. Hadn't been training a year even. And yep. um, had just two just crazy tough matches. Almost gave me a heart attack just because i mean just watching you know people get in bad positions all of a sudden but they work she worked through them and then almost came back from a deficit yeah and then started just crushing i'm like giving her another minute she would have Mm -hmm. won you know just i just love seeing that and so i think that what that the the w or the l on that to me is irrelevant Mm -hmm. because that was a huge win because just from a personal Mm -hmm. standpoint and like they just expanded their comfort zone. Oh my gosh. Right? Yeah. They, they're going to be able to tap into those. And, and I was talking with, uh, Tony, one of our Brown belts today, and he, he said it perfectly. You never think about the wins. Mm-hmm. You never really remember the wins. Mm-hmm. It's the losses that will really stick out and are really going to help you improve, mm-hmm. which is so stereotypical, right? Like you either win or you learn, you know? Yeah, but it's true. Though. It's like most stereotypes. There's they, truth behind it. They kind of come from someplace. Mm-hmm. You know, there's some truth in there for sure, and, and I think that's definitely one of them. So it's for anyone that's competing, not just people at our gym. Like, if you didn't have the the on paper result, that's whatever. You know, uh, whether you let's say you did and you won everything, you're still like we had some people that had really good performances and won gold and all that kind of stuff, but they're still all they're thinking about is how I screwed up that and how I screwed up this. Mm -hmm. Right. So either way, you're going to be going in on Monday and trying to figure out what Mm -hmm. to do better. Right. Right. And, um, so anyone that even just got out there good on you, you Mm -hmm. know, and I've shamed the people that didn't get out there enough (laughs) and they know who they are. So I won't bring them up by name. I love it. So anyway, congratulations to everyone. And, People that are, especially new black belts, that are looking at opening a school. Um, that's a huge commitment, and it's really exemplified at a tournament where you see our professors. I mean, I'm just going to, he doesn't like being, having praise heaped upon him, but he's there committed every day behind everyone, 100% running around, coaching, you know, mm-hmm. and, you know, just takes a lot out of a person, but he's there every time and puts it all into it. And so just so you know, you know, that's, that's a big commitment when you're opening an academy. Mm-hmm. It's probably one of the uh, harder things about being a like head coach or yep. one of the like primary leaders is, is that consistency where mm-hmm. people are depending on you and, mm-hmm. and in these tournaments where they are like extremely demanding days, uh, emotionally, and, oh, by the way, physically, you know, he competed too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so did you. I mean, as an, another one of the coaches. So, you know, that's even, you know. Yeah, to throw in like just an extra kind of set of whether it's emotional pressure mm-hmm. or, or or what have you. And we talked about on last episode where competing locally actually has more yeah. stress with it from mm-hmm. a coach's perspective than even um, doing a huge tournament that's out of state or something yeah. like that. So when you combine that along with, all your students that you have to kind of look after and, Mm -hmm. you know, be on top of your game and stuff. Uh, it's, it's, it's a heavy workload for sure. Very, very cool. I'm, I'm proud of everyone. So yeah, everyone. Very, very, very pleased. Um, yeah. So first question, we, we got a few questions that came in. Okay. And I figured I'd, I'd bring those up. Um, first is on red light therapy. (laughs) Okay. One of our favorite topics. Didn't we do a podcast about it? Did we talk about the mechanisms? I think we 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 have talked about it. It's been a little bit since we really okay. talked about it too much, but fair enough. Go ahead. I, it might be good to just kind of rehash it a little bit. Sure. Um, sure. Because I mean, we should definitely get some sort of referral code because I feel like we've helped sell like four hundred of these things, <laughs> dude. <laughs> no kidding, especially the Mito Red. <laughs> yeah, Mito should get sponsored. Where are you at? Hello. Um. So, uh, the question is, uh, it's been. They feel like it's been some time since uh, the podcast discussing red light therapy. Mm. I just ordered some panels to aid in some of my jiu-jitsu related aches and pains. Mm-hmm. I'd love to hear if you are all still using them mm-hmm. and 
anything you may have learned on the subject since the previous episode mm-hmm. that we kind of zeroed in on it a little bit. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll start because I know you're going to have more to say on this. But, sure. Uh, we use it every night, mm. literally every night um, on something. Uh, if it's maybe, um, maybe, maybe I don't have something injured. Olivia's going to use it on like your face or whatever, right? Like for face skin. And usually, um, yeah, like the back of my back, my neck. What's your primary goal with that? Like with, with face? Yeah. Well, a lot of times I use it for, um, cause I clench my jaw a lot. So I'm trying to like kind of reduce the inflammation mm. in the muscle and the tension. Yep. But then also, um, it's good for skin collagen that's like rejuvenation, right. like good for um aging anti-aging yeah. yep and then i use it for my back for um just from jujitsu like i just get super tight so right. let's be clear those. it's combo red and infrared yes, yes. which we're going to touch it's on really that. important because that's going to be extremely mm-hmm. it's very a, important important piece that chris will touch on mm-hmm. and tell a little bit why as well mm-hmm. um i myself i usually use it uh, when I have something that's nagging me mm-hmm. um, or if I just tweak something. Uh, for, for example, right now I'm actually getting a little bit of a flare-up of golfer and uh, tennis elbow yeah. on the same arm attributed to adding judo to my uh, <laughs> regiment. For sure. Because it's the, on my lead arm. Well, the torquing you're doing with yes. that arm, yeah, and the grip. And I'm I'm in this over-the-back grip that has this kind of like... That's a setup for it. Like, what kind of position would you say my arm's in here? Like, so it's almost like, imagine a collar tie position. Yeah. But instead of your wrist turned into the neck, your wrist, your palm is flat down. Yeah. Like, and if you're, you're making you got like a, a, little, a goose. Yeah. Almost like the, if you guys watch Dodgeball, it's the purple cobra symbol. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. And that's, that's the uh, grip I've been using yeah. in judo. And there's a lot of push, pull, lifting. And I've really noticed that the, uh, medial the yeah the meal is like really flaring up quite a bit so um i i just started red lighting that if i get any of my trigger points in the upper back mm-hmm. start start to get tight i can't it, i've we talked about in the last episode mm-hmm. uh, i've been dealing with some kind of things that mm-hmm. popped up mm-hmm. uh primarily with my feet yep and um whether it's like partial tears in ligaments or tendons, uh, tendons mm-hmm. um, or whatever. The red light, it, I'm such a nays, not naysayer, but skeptical on that kind of stuff. Just in general. In and, general. And you should be. It, and it's, I, I can't say it enough. It's, it's, it's well, legit helps. Well, and I, you know, I told the story about um, several years ago, we had a, one of our kitties was about to pass on and she was 20 years old. Yeah but still very sharp mentally as far as she didn't, you know, she but was not super mobile at all. Yeah. She could barely get off of her warm bed and couldn't go up and down the stairs. Mm-hmm. And we were like, all right, we were thinking about getting one of these combo red light near infrared. We're like, yeah, we'll just get a small panel. And we used it on her for yeah. 15 minutes. And then we got six more months of mobility out of her to being able to walk up walking and down the stairs. Yeah. Yeah. And we had to do it every night, of course, but cats don't, care about placebo they're not like oh this is going to help me Mm -hmm. they all they know is they feel better right and so that really and i knew the research behind it but that really was like oh this is completely legit and a big thing you just said is 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 really big is consistency yep so like when i am having like a flare-up or something maybe even my hands my fingers Mm -hmm. or, or something like that i will consistently let's say do a week straight three days, four days Mm -hmm. straight, 20 minutes. And like, that's when it really starts to take effect. If Mm -hmm. I just do, okay, my hands kind of hurt. I I do it one day. Then I take a day off. Then I do another day and then I take another day off Mm -hmm. or two days off. You're kind of losing the effectiveness. Not completely, Mm -hmm. but you're really going to like anything with Mm -hmm. consistency. You're going to see the effect. Sure. Uh, But you yourself, I know you use it just like us. Regularly. Yeah, and so since people asked the question, I'll briefly go back through. So, you know, the, the mechanism for both red and infrared, so if you look at the spectrum, the electromagnetic spectrum, it, I mean, it ranges all the way from like X-rays, you know, these ionizing radiation type of things to non-ionizing radiation. What that means is ionizing radiation, the the 
radiation can actually do damage to DNA and tissues. Mm. You know, it will cause ionization ionization reactions in other words chemical changes and breaks and bonds and things like that dna damage things like that um uv light is in that category where um a little bit's good you know uvb especially is from that the where sun. you get the people like in arizona their skin yeah. is like pretty damaged over yeah. like when they get yeah. even 40 it's like oh man that's right okay so you get you can get but at the same time you don't want to avoid it completely because of the hormesis effect right have you ever seen that picture of the like truck driver lady had the one arm yeah and like a side of her face yeah because it's the side that this like they get is the, the window side uh-huh. and it's wrinkled as all get out yeah. and, and the sun spots and then the other side is like totally yeah. different it's crazy well that's what prolonged exposure does that i'm just kind of and so those type of um when you look at the whole spectrum, those are very short wavelength, high energy, right? Mm-hmm. And so then you, as you progress so-called to the right, where we get into the visible spectrum of the rainbow colors, basically, mm-hmm. you know, where red is the longest of the wavelengths of the visible. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. And um, violet is the kind of shortest wavelength of the uh, visible mm. light. If you keep going and then you know, to the left, ultraviolet is non-visible, yeah. but has even a shorter wavelength. Now, if we go to the right of red, then we go into infrared. So that's the heat and stuff like that where you can't see. Even mm. things like microwaves, radio waves, things like that are on that side of the spectrum. So where we're at with this type of therapy is we're at the very end of the visible light, the long wavelengths of red, and then the even longer wavelength of infrared. And infrared's broken into near and far infrared. It all has to do with the wavelength, the length of the actual individual Mm. light photon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, so that makes a difference because typically people say, oh, I'm using red light therapy for muscle aches. Yeah, not really. Mm -hmm. That doesn't really penetrate the skin too well. You can get some local increase in blood flow at the skin level with red. It just doesn't penetrate to the depth. Mm. So red light itself is really good for, like Olivia was talking about, skin health. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, You know, you see people doing it for anti-aging of the skin, increased collagen production. Uh, We can look at it for superficial wound healing, things Mm. like that, right? where the near infrared will actually penetrate a couple centimeters down to get the muscular layers, right? Then you start getting more of the... And that's a that's a big thing is, you corrected me on this yeah. when, when we got ours, is having your limb, whatever you're red lighting, mm-hmm. close to it. Fairly close. Where There's a, yeah. I was more like, let's... Near a foot, close. Yeah. You're at the very end of your therapeutic... But yeah. because it's going to lose its ener- energetic. So now when yeah. I do it, I'm, I'm only a couple inches maybe yeah. away from, from That's the actual right. light source. That's right. And so the way it works, um, this isn't the same mechanism, but conceptually, you know how plants make glucose through sunlight? <laughs> okay. Photosynthesis. You probably heard of photosynthesis. I've where, definitely heard that word in my life. Where plants can use the sun through a series of reactions to actually make what they need. Right, they can photosynthesize glucose basically. Okay, now it works for with a process. Don't worry about the long, stupid word, it's called biophotomodulation. All that means is, or photobiomodulation, however, you want to arrange it. Photos the light, biomodulation means it changes something. Mm-hmm. Okay, what happens is very much like photosynthesis with plants, there's a specialized molecule um, that actually that has a certain atom at the center of it, it actually captures and the, the light actually changes when it hits it, it changes configuration of the molecule, which sets a downstream reaction on a molecular level. The human body has the same thing in the mitochondria. And that's where we're getting a lot of this action from this bio boat. Gosh, I hate even saying it. <laughs> Biophotomodulation where let's say we're in a muscle cell that near infrared light, will hit one of these components of an enzyme called um, cytochrome C oxidase. It's part of the mitochondrial energy system. You don't need to know, unless you guys are biochemists, mm. I don't know, you're going to be like, want to shoot me here in a second. Okay. But <laughs> the bottom line is it's part of the electron transport chain at the end part of making energy, 
Let's just put it that way. It will hit the 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 photons will hit that and induce conformational changes in it, which have a downstream signaling effect, which tells the nucleus of the cell to make more of something. Um, Anti-inflammatory compounds in the skin with red light increase collagen production, so it signals the nucleus of the cell to turn on genes, basically, mm. to make stuff. And um, really, really interesting. Yeah. Um, increase local blood flow, things like that that can uh, accentuate healing. Um, mm-hmm. So it sounds like BS, but we've studied this actually. <laughs> um, and we've looked at human models of osteoarthritis and the knee especially and a significant improvement in symptomatic relief basically um, over time. Um, people that use it almost like instead of taking an ibuprofen, which has its own problems, mm-hmm. they're using this, right? And with pretty good effect. And I have that other N equals one veterinary <laughs> yeah. thing we did with our, my cat, which yeah. was phenomenal. So, and, and not all are created equal, and that's where yeah. the dual light spectrum that you're talking about comes in because, uh, and we brought it up before, we have almost like a travel one that's about the size of your cell phone. Yep. And, um, and you know, I don't know why. I, but is that one a dual? Mm-hmm. So I don't know what it is, but we, there was a time where, because we were both nursing stuff, mm-hmm. she was using the big panel, and then I would use a small one. Mm-hmm. And it, otherwise, we're doing like, if she's doing two 20-minute sessions, I'm doing 20-minute sessions. Mm-hmm. We're, we're sitting in the room for like two hours. <laughs> yeah, Just, no, I get it. And um, uh, so I was using that, but I noticed the efficiency or... Uh, how Maybe the power isn't as yeah how the output. Uh, uh, yeah it, it wasn't that's as right. effective it's not and that's the one thing i'll tell people don't skimp on these things yeah. right yeah we had someone get the face one yeah uh, or I, I think it was the face one and they were trying to use it on like arms and stuff like that yeah but that's just a red light thing. Yeah. Mm, yeah right so you're using kind of the wrong thing that only emits red light it's not going to be as effective on musculoskeletal injuries yeah yeah. And it's it's noticeable, especially when you have access to both. As soon as I started going back to the big panel, stuff was clearing up immediately. Well, it's really interesting, right? And you know, I've bought even a bigger panel now, yeah, right, um, to cover more surface area. What's interesting is the company that we use, Mito Red. Um, they actually have a new version out called the I Mito Adapt that, that yeah. looks like it goes cycles through a bunch of other wavelengths too. Mm. I haven't tried it, so. Mm. Um, Oh, besides the two? Yeah, yeah. It cycles through within those near infrared and red, there's a ranges, mm. right? And there's maybe some optimum ones in nanometers is what you measure wavelengths in. Interesting. And yeah. So like a little range, it will kind of, my my understanding of it anyway, it will kind of cycle through some of those. Yeah. Um, and has different programs for different things. And, you know, I don't know if this has all been tested and verified on how effective that really is, but... I can just tell you the mid-level model that I've gotten. The mm-hmm. Mito Pro, the Pro series is excellent. That's what we have, right? Too, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you guys yeah. have that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I couldn't talk about their higher end one, um, mm-hmm. and if it's worth it or not. But yeah, because you basically got the the Pro, but you just got a bigger one. A right? bigger one. Yeah, yeah a bigger panel it hangs on the door essentially. Or oh, something I actually like got a rolling stand for it. It's pretty cool. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I can kind of roll it around. Yeah. It looks like a little like a Star Wars robot or mm-hmm. something. Okay, but it's thin. Yeah, that the, I, I think for for this fella that uh, just got theirs, mm. just give it a shot. Just be consistent with mm-hmm. it. Uh, try it out. You know, they're not cheap. Yeah. Uh, the one that we have is uh, probably it's like three sixty nine. I think. Yeah, three sixty nine. It's probably shipping. about twelve by ten. Yeah, you guys have that desktop panel. Yeah, yeah, a- and. Uh, it articulates in a bunch of different ways. So you can like, like I, my hamstring, when I started judo, my, we're starting Uchimata's mm-hmm. and we, all that extension, all that extension yep. and the way that the place I go to, uh, Washington Judo Academy, they, the way they do drilling is, so imagine the wall is to my right because mm-hmm. I, I'm a righty uh, for this at least. And, my left leg is planted. My right leg is coming back mm. as like the back kick, mm-hmm. right, for an Uchibata. Mm-hmm. So that means my right hand needs to essentially go to touch my left toe, mm-hmm. right? So my head's coming down. You look underneath your armpit. 
So you're doing this kind of rotation. Yeah. And the reason we're right next to the wall is you want to be leaning away from your planted leg so you get rotation to that side. So you're using the wall to almost like fall into. Yeah. But what was happening is they would have us, we had to keep our back kicking leg as straight as possible. Right. Don't curl it. Yep. So keep it as straight as possible. Internally rotate the hip. Yep. So with our toes, we were almost like pigeon towing mm-hmm. them in, mm-hmm. which would drop the hip, yep. which then causes that. Ro- and then as you look behind you, it causes a tremendous well, amount of rotation. It's a lot of dynamic stress in the hamstring. And then on the planted foot, yeah. once we're there, he would say hold <laughs> and then elevate onto your toes. Nice. So we're here like a flat foot and then pump we get it up. down and then boom and yeah. then hold that for 10 seconds yeah you're building that positional strength <sighs> in those yeah my hamstring mm. i bet your calves too calves glutes yeah my butthole yeah everything was stretched all that posterior stuff all the posterior mm-hmm. stuff mm-hmm. and then and then we did it without a wall mm-hmm. and where someone so it's same thing we're leaning mm-hmm. towards my right shoulder side mm-hmm. right because that's my kicking side mm-hmm. and but instead of a wall, because you can kind of lean and mm-hmm. press against it, mm-hmm. made it even harder on the next stage, which was someone is off to our left side, holding us by the belt, and now it's all gravity. And oh. they're just, they're like leaning backwards because it's totally, so heavy. Yeah. And we have to just be on our toes and we're like, Hold. like, uh, you're stabilizing. Yes. Yeah. And, and then they count to 10 and on 10, they let you go and you have to front roll out of it. See, that's awesome. You're <sighs> building that positional strength. Yeah. I and love that. I noticed just in what, it's been like three weeks or something, mm-hmm. four weeks, maybe mm-hmm. my, my, uh, did you see me drill in Uchimata? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, of course. It's pretty dynamic now. Totally. Yeah, like, It's like amazing how well much that's done and a lot of it you know stabilizing that plant leg is everything because that's where it's coming from you know and so that's awesome and that's kind of the basis of a lot of the stuff i like doing with single limb stuff too for the same reason and that breakdown is huge and and what Mm. i was getting at with that is anyway you're using the red light hamstring got extremely tight Uh and so the way it articulates is like you can have the lights point like up Mm -hmm. so i put my leg up on a chair and it would just be right under my mm-hmm. hamstring. So you can do it a bunch of different ways. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's legit. And the, uh, what I like about those is you can set either, or you can do red infrared or both. Yeah. I usually turn on both just for the heck of it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I like it totally. Yeah. Um, another question, and this is more of like a, a comment almost, but mm-hmm. okay. something to think on noodle on, if you will. Mm hmm. The best teachers are meant to be outgrown by their students. Agree or disagree? The best teachers are meant to be outgrown by their students. I think it's inevitable. Yeah. Go on. Especially if you do it for a lifetime. Mm. For sure. Mm -hmm. And that's what you should strive for anyway. For your students to to, surpass you. To surpass you, of course. Mm. Um, I think that if you are really dedicated to being a teacher, Mm. I think there's no better um, litmus, you know, little check in the box for am I effective? Because that just means, you know, you can set a foundation effectively for a beginner that maybe you had to struggle for 10 years to get the same amount of knowledge. Mm-hmm. And you're able to impart that knowledge in a way to accelerate their learning yeah. at a younger level than you were even. And so the natural outgrowth of that should be for them to surpass you. Cause you know, physically it'd be different if we never aged, Sure, yeah. <laughs> you know, we could continue in our 25 year old bodies, mm-hmm. you know, um, but the nature of, of the beast is your, yeah, your student should, you know, if you're, if you're doing a good job, mm-hmm. they should surpass you. What? If, Not all, but, but sure. You should have a proportion of them. It's going to be hard for someone to surpass Hodger Gracie or something. Yeah, like that. You know, when you have these, you know, outlier, but in general, if you're imparting everything else being equal, if you're doing your job and really, you know, you look at, um, I mean, we always go back to like John Danaher, mm-hmm. right? Um, he has physical limitations, right? Um, and 
you know, he's not trying to compete against his students, Mm -hmm. but he's accelerated their development, arguably, Mm -hmm. um, to the point where, you know, they certainly surpassed him as a, you know, as a practitioner, at least in the, in the competition and sparring realm. From a coaching perspective, what would you, what if you're not having students surpass you? How would you address that? I would do some self-reflection. Yeah. Yeah. Um, You may be doing something subconsciously to sabotage things a bit. Mm. You know, I I don't know. It'd be different for everyone. What Um, are some things that that could do that, you think? Putting yourself before your students. Mm. Let's say that you're a high-level competitor. Yeah. Or, a comp- or just, you know, that's really important. Just to, like competing or something like that. Yeah, that yeah. Competing is, you, you got to look at your priorities as an, you know, if you are truly running an academy, um, let's just say you're, you know, you don't have a big s- staff of, you know, right, yeah. like a competition instructor on that. You can certainly, I see very easily, take much of your energy to your own development and kind of go through the motions with their, and think that you're doing a good job with yeah. your students. Yeah. And perhaps really not like, hey, because coaching is freaking hard. You can't cookie cut or something. Mm-hmm. If you start doing like one size fits all for your students. People know. And they're, they're not going to develop the same because yeah. one person needs something different than someone else does. In developing that skill as a coach, I mean, that is very difficult to develop. Mm. The proper cueing, how to motivate different people. Not necessarily, necessarily you shouldn't have to motivate people, but in, the encouragement piece, the psychological piece of being a coach, mm-hmm. and um, the technical development, you know, knowing how to coach different body types, different. I mean, it takes a lot of effort to develop that skill. Yeah. And if you are thinking you're doing that, I'm running my academy. I'm just kind of, here's the instruction. I'm not going around trying to, oh, this person's having difficulty. Why are they having difficulty? Oh, you know, instead of like, oh, well, you're just not good at that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It'd be easy to dismiss that person. I'm like, hey, knowing how to alter things for them. So I think if you look in yourself and, hey, maybe I'm putting, my effort really isn't where I think it is. Mm -hmm. But that takes a lot of self-reflection and being honest with yourself too. And so I think if you're seeing a pattern of that, I would look at you first and say, you know, and maybe you don't even know how to be a good coach. Yeah. You just think because I'm a black belt, I'm automatically a good coach. That's not the damn truth. That's very far from. Or or not only a good coach, good instructor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, do you have any, I mean, that's, that, that would be my first thing if you see that. Pattern. Yeah. Yes. I, I think that is probably extremely challenging mm. because the self-reflection side and like also getting to the point that you realize that why don't I have any students that are really pushing me? Like truly like, take away like physical elements. Like maybe there's someone like crazy stronger than you mm-hmm. or, or sure. something like that. But from a technical perspective, mm-hmm. you're not getting pushed. Yeah. Why is that? Now one thing is going to be time. Yep. Right. It's early on in an academy for sure. I right. get that developing an academy. Yes, of course. You know, sure. You, you know, if you got a new academy, you might absorb a purple belt or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, but if you're starting fresh, like you're going to have to home grow a lot of people and it's going to take a lot of time. But if you're eight years in yeah, and you're still with, with that same base of students and you're still not really getting someone that's starting to push you a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There might be a, yeah. A systemic problem or even catch you and all that. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Totally. Totally. There might be something going on there. Right. Yeah. I, I find it's, it's an interesting I think it's an interesting element because there's also it's go, there's going to be the uh the ego side that comes in that's hard to deal with from a coach's perspective yeah man especially as we get older and i get it but do you know what that that brings me back to just or to this is my gut level room. reaction yeah some of those traditional not i'm not throwing shade it but the traditional martial arts as i grew up yeah where you have a sensei Mm-hmm. And they were looked at, it was almost like guru, like they cannot do wrong. Cut, yes. Like they can force throw you and, yeah. you, you know, use a chi strike or something. Yeah. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Yes. Where 
you have this, you're not having real interaction. Uh huh. You know, you, we've all seen these kind of things on YouTube where people just, their students are just kind of falling down. Yeah. And McDojo the, life is like the best. Yeah, well, one, right. Yeah. And, but, but I think that's a trap. Right? right. And I think that gets into like culty hero worship stuff where if you're really having an honest, I mean, the, the, you know, like I, I guarantee you, that's why, why I like our academy so much. Our professor is in the midst of this. Mm-hmm. He's, he rolls. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, often. And so I think that's a trap you fall into. And, and the ego thing falls into that because it's a cult, it becomes like a cult of personality. Like, well, I can never be defeated. Yeah. <laughs> or I can't let myself look like I am, you know? And that's just, that's wrong minded. Yeah. I, I, it can be hard, I think, also to. You can. It is a trap where you can fall into it. Mm-hmm. And if you don't realize it, mm-hmm. it starts like kind of taking over. It will. Um, yeah. It, it's just something that I, I kind of was thinking about is, is being being a coach and having that kind of almost out of body mindset of, of like you, you need to. You need to kind of pay attention to that stuff from a coach's side. Even if you're, maybe you're not the head coach. Maybe you're even mm-hmm. like me. I'm not the head coach. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a coach, but it's, I need to take note of the, uh, the people in, whether it's my class or even in just in the room as, as upper belts, mm-hmm. like you should be helping the room a, a bit. Yeah, I mean, my opinion. Well, I, I agree. And most I- likely you got helped. I did. I, it's paying back, right? Right. Um, even recently, I had someone I've been working with a while um, um, on, a, on a couple things, um, a lower belt than I am, got me in one of my own things, one of my own uh, sequences. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I yeah. like, and it made me feel good, right? I'm like, because yeah. it was awesome. Um, who cares, man? I'm happy that we've taken someone and developed them to the point where they're catching me. I don't know if there's a better feeling than showing someone something Yeah, and they catch someone or they catch you. They catch me. Yeah. Especially, uh, Olivia caught me. Yeah. And a step over. What would you catch me with? It was a step over. Step over choke. Uh, the yeah. Kanto choke. Well, Kanto. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, it sucked so bad. Is that you know, from side control, top side? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And yep, I know she knows it, but she set it up where I wasn't expecting it. Right, and you turned on your side towards her, probably. It just and felt, and then you're like, ah, so bad. Well, especially so if it's good. waiting for it. Yeah, you know, you're waiting it, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh shit, okay. Yeah, and that's like one of our, you know, me and you both love that one. I love and, that show, and and it's it's. uh it just, it feels so good. So even if you are like a freaking blue belt, mm-hmm. a, a purple belt, something like that, like helping those lower belts, mm-hmm. you will get so much gratification. One, you're going to get better. Mm-hmm. But two, you're going to get so much gratification when you watch your little pupil white belt wrist lock a new guy. <laughs> oh, gosh. That's funny. There's a feeling that comes over you. It's, it's like you watch Rudy for the first time and he runs onto the field and you just, I mean, I full on cry every time. That's funny. I will just let them, let it flow. Yeah. You too, right? That's a good movie. You cry? I don't think I cried, but it's, it's good. <laughs> Look, it's okay. It's all Is right it? if you did. Yeah, it's fine. I know it's okay if I cried. It's okay to cry. But yeah. You didn't cry. In that instance. Perhaps. Maybe I did. I can't remember. It's been a long time. Oh my gosh, Bill. (laughs) Do we have to mute that? I don't know, but just stop it. Just let it ride. Yeah. You should watch Iron Claw. That'll make you cry. Have you seen that movie? Iron Claw? It's the wrestling. Oh, is that the Von Erichs? Yes. Yes. I haven't seen it yet. I go into this because, you know, Zach Efron's in it. Oh, yeah, of course. He's all yoked up. Yeah. (sighs) Biggest jaw in town. Yeah. Obviously had a bad surgery yeah or hgh jaw or whatever mm-hmm. is going on there mm-hmm. and i'm like okay this is gonna be cool nostalgic 70s 80s wrestling 90s mm-hmm. whatever it is wrestling rick flair mm-hmm. 
It's the saddest movie you've ever seen. Their family tragedy. Have you? No. Do you know the story? I, no. I didn't know it. No. Five kids. Six. Six kids. Everyone's killing themselves, getting in car wrecks. The dad's the biggest piece of work you've ever met. Ugh. Oh my gosh! Think, Spoiler alert! I sorry. think I'll pass for a while. I'm Dude, only Tom in a better see, place. I don't like. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like movies anymore that try to make me cry. Yeah, I'm over it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like them. I got enough in daily life that makes me cry. No That's true. kidding. I ate two donuts today. Ugh. That makes you want to cry. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna make me want to. I tell you what. I had one, a couple of those freaking scones on Saturday. Yeah, I felt like I was did. poisoned for a day. It was worth it, though. You want to hear something that did I Did you guarantee- text Amy about the scones? Me? Yeah. No. You will not believe this. I guarantee it. Guess how many scones I ate on Saturday. Well, you're telling me I won't believe something about how much you ate? Yes. I probably would. But go ahead. Give it to me. Just could throw a number out there. Ten. That's amateur stuff. But this is why you won't believe it. I didn't have a single one. Oh, right. Okay, you're right. I didn't. I don't believe it. <laughs> I don't believe it. I had a chili glizzy, Coney style. Okay, why but do you, why do you call it that? A what? A glizzy? glizzy? What is that? That's a nickname. For what? It's what the modern day kids call it. Call what? Hot dogs. <laughs> Wieners. Okay. I wouldn't have known what you're talking about. <laughs> you didn't know what a glizzy was? No. I would have thought maybe like an ice cream cone or a Slurpee. I don't know. No, dude. I know one guy does. His name's Jacob Flippin, mm. the hippie. Yeah, he knows what a glizzy is. Okay, that man can go four deep at once. Okay, that's <laughs> imp- quite impressive, actually. It is. Yeah, he put up a good Instagram post that said he's not afraid to lose. He's not afraid to make a mistake, and he's not afraid for someone to pull his pants down and spank his bare bottom in front of his team. Okay. <laughs> That's the mindset we ask for at Cascade Jiu-Jitsu. <laughs> so you're speaking for Cascade Jiu-Jitsu now? Yes. No, I'm speaking as one of the coaches <laughs> at Cascade Jiu-Jitsu that that's the kind of commitment we look for when you walk in the door. Did, did this message get approved by the professor? <laughs> I haven't ran it by him yet. Uh, <laughs> okay. You might want to do that with that last one. He might be all about it, but, you know, you at least give him the courtesy. If, if I know the ginge... He's down with some bare bottom smacking at a tournament. Oh my gosh, Bill. I still would <laughs> run just, it by him. Just out of courtesy. Well, Andrew, uh, message me if uh, you don't like this part. <laughs> Episode's out on Wednesday. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Too bad. <laughs> he has to listen Didn't to mean to first. put you out on blast like that. For um, smacking bottoms. Yeah. The So, that that's actually, I, I don't know what I'm talking about. I mean, about he now. did wear a wrestling singlet. He did, and he put his butthole in my nose. Yeah, yeah. Not my nose in his butthole, but his butthole yeah. in my nose. It was for a good cause, though. It and was your birthday, fortieth birthday. Yeah, it was for a good cause. Um, what was I saying? The anyway, you didn't eat a scone. Yeah, I didn't eat a single one. Yeah, but I had two huge donuts today. One of them had Reese's pieces littered over the top of it. This is the one that. One of our students brought in. Yes, for their one year. Mm-hmm. Hala to Acacia. It's their one year today mm-hmm. of jiu-jitsu. That's awesome. Um, and then, but at the tournament, uh, let me see. I'm trying to think if there was any other updates. Andrew and I closed out the finals. I know. We'd be dominating that middleweight old man division. Hala. Shout out to him for actually giving me the... Uh, the nod to be well, on the top of the in pole. general, that is a mark of a good professor. There you go. But who he gave it to, <laughs> I was like, dude. With and the me. only reason I say this, because I saw him walking around with his silver, uh-huh. which is great. Sure. You guys had a tough, you know, it, mm-hmm. it was excellent. Yeah. But in my mind, I can see you parading the gold around and then start talking smack. And so that was the only thing. No, in, in all seriousness. Which I didn't even do an Instagram post. I didn't do anything that said that, I got that's gold. True. Okay. That's true. Well, I'm proud of you. And I didn't even walk around with my medals. I'm proud of you then. You didn't even see any with a medal. That's yeah, true. I did not. But I just, but no, in, in all I did s- double gold if you were asking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I was, I was there. 
and I read I, it in a book. I was right there when you guys made that decision That's true. on your nogi to, yeah. when you are when you won the first one. He he was yeah it, that was um what's my favorite closing out with him in the finals. It's it's so awesome to like have us uh, on the podium. We held hands with our opponents and everything on the podium. As you should, which was great. As you should. <laughs> Actually, it was kind of funny. We. Uh, I forgot who said it. I if it was Andrew or me, if we were like, should we all hold hands? You on guys the had podium? such a good group of black belts. Yeah, yeah. Everyone good, was so nice, very cool, and yeah. we're like, should we just hold hands on the podium? And this is Andrew and I just being like silly. Uh-huh. And the guy in third, uh, Marquez, he yeah. goes, he just answered before anybody and said, "Yep, let's do it." And then we get up on the podium and he just puts his hand up, like waiting for me uh-huh. to hold his hand. Uh-huh. I like it. <laughs> and then we took the podium shot, which is, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, we kissed after. That's okay. No. It, he said it's okay. Cheating on me? No, I didn't kiss anybody. <laughs> Chris. It's fine. I mean, I don't judge anybody what you want to do in the heat of the moment. We know you don't mind. It's fine. <laughs> I'm You're good. the biggest pickle kisser in town. Hello. <laughs> You're so funny. Yeah, it was, it's cool, though. We were talking about um, once my orthodontics come up, mm-hmm. I want to do the Masters 5 so mm-hmm. we can have a... Because there's actually a couple of guys that have been I know. signing up. And you know what? They shouldn't have to drop down to the Savages. Yeah, because a lot of time, if there's only one, they got to go down to Dude. either our division or they go up and wait. Yeah, I don't want to do either of those. And so... I think that'd be great so we can have, a, you know, the over 50 crowd representing too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that will be, be fun. That'll be pretty cool. Um, yeah. oh, I had something else. Son of a biscuit. Son of a biscuit eating bulldog. I don't Another remember. what? I don't know. Something to talk about. But uh, I'm going to do a match study on one of my matches. Mm-hmm. So if uh, people like those, I'm going to kind of go over go over that because mm-hmm. there was some some stuff in there that I think might be entertaining to like, talk about from a technical perspective oh i think that'd be great um matter of fact i would i personally would like you to see you do both your gi and your no gi oh really there's some good stuff okay on for some of the control things you got and i really enjoyed watching your no gi especially when you were a little kind of worried about it <laughs> yes no you know yeah i know and yeah. i just um it was cool that I, was and i think i talked about that it's mm-hmm. like that was what really I was I can trust my gi game, but I just don't train no gi. And I like if I do, it's at an open mat, and mm-hmm. someone's like, "Hey, you want to do no gi?" And I'm like, "Okay, yeah, I know you're yeah. sure." And then, um, so I, I I was pretty concerned, and 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 like the guys in my bracket, they all look mean, like they all look like very like, you know, they all got gnarly ears, and yeah. they're all in shape and mm-hmm. scary looking. So, um, it like. I'm I'm one of those people that I I, I look at my opponents and I mm. get kind of freaked out. Mm. So, um, that that was like a big big thing, mm. and uh, it was good. Yeah. So yeah, yeah maybe, I, that, I, maybe that'd be I, worth. You know. I would like to see both of them because I I did watch mm-hmm. all of your matches. So I'd like to see. Um, I, I definitely would like to see you break them down. Yeah. Um, a couple things I want to kind of. So we're still trying to coordinate a time for Carrie, just so yeah. to let you guys know we didn't forget about doing a, another testosterone because we had a lot of testosterone questions. Yeah, we we, we have a, a few, quite a few banked. Um, so th- we haven't forgotten about that. Um, I'm gonna give you guys some updates on kind of that new strength approach I'm doing, especially for you older folks. Yeah. Um, a really good book to read. I talked to you guys last time. That whole um, easy strength book with Pavel and Dan John um, has a really nice way to look at kind of the stuff. Um, mm-hmm. And the last thing I'm I'm doing. I don't know if you'll be able to focus on this. Put it in front of your face, mm. like out. It looks like a crack pipe or something, it doesn't it? Does it does? What this? If you guys can see this, I don't know if it's focusing or not. Try to hold it out. Like this, yeah. All right, it it's a breath trainer, and it has a dial for both inhalation and exhalation resistance. There's no electronics; it's it's all kind of mechanical. Um, And you know, I'm I'm starting to kind of get into looking at strengthening the breathing apparatus, your diaphragm, and all. Right, you know, the whole idea behind that 
in my mind is like, you know, like I was telling you before the podcast, like if you have someone that just started strength training and they're trying to do bicep curls with a dumbbell, yeah, maybe 20 pounds is a lot of effort for them. Right. After a year, they're not using a near as much energy to do the same amount because of the strength gains. And I'm wondering about energy conservation with the strong, stronger, the actual muscles of breathing, yeah. right? And both for strength and endurance. So I'm going to start playing with this, and I'm also going to look at the research and see. And what that reminded that. me was is it's because it's just popular in our circles is the Boss Rutan yeah, o- the O2 trainer. Yeah, and I actually have that. Um, it has a bunch of different things. What, what I like about this is it's one piece, and you can change where the Boss Rutan ones, your inhalation and exhalation are the same resistance. Mm. Um, this you can actually adjust either adjust either um so pretty cool it's like 30 bucks um for whatever yeah. but anyway I, i'm gonna start playing with that and um i'll let you guys know what first of all if i'm gonna dig up some research behind this type of thing i think that'd be great um and then i'll s- let you know over time what my experiences are with it because i think any little thing you know if you can get more efficient breathing mm-hmm I mean, that's huge yeah. for me. So anyway, so that's something um, I'm looking at. That, yeah, I think that'll be awesome to actually see. Um, also, shout out to a comment that came in that said, I had to pull out from a tournament last month due to a really aggressive stomach bug. Mm. Uh, a paid trip to Worlds was actually on the line, so it was a huge bummer. Oh, that sucks. And he said, but my internal asshole had to yield to my actual asshole. <laughs> That's like Stop. the that then, I think that's the best comment ever. I appreciated the story. Yeah. And I, I responded with the actual asshole is undefeated. It and it should be. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise you're gonna poop on someone you in a will. tournament. That's right. Because if the other one beats the actual yes. valve, yes. Yeah, there's a problem. The there, thing's not airtight. Potential problem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um and I just appreciated the candor in that comment. I like the creativity. Yes, same. So hats off to you. It's right up our alley. Big ups. CJ Heward Barrow, 779. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good comment. Did you watch any ADCC trials, West Coast? When was it? Obviously, if I'm asking. Two you, I didn't. weeks ago? Yeah. No, nah, dude. I've, no. I've, it's work stuff. And okay. Yeah. I it was good. My, it was really good. Okay. There were, there were some really good matches. Um, pretty entertaining but other than that probably kind of a weird episode a little disheveled because of the tournament so apologize for that no we'll, we'll have a little bit more organization on the next one um appreciate you guys like i said coming up at the tournament saying what's up saying that you listen say you enjoy it say that you like me more and chris i really really like that yeah um and keep making bill feel good because he, he needs yes. it so Yes, yeah. and I know Olivia paid half of you, so yeah. uh, I really appreciate that, guys. <laughs> um, other than that, if you got questions, let us know. We'll answer them. See you next time. Later. <laughs>